Hey guys, so I am back to deliver this message uh, to you guys. It's coming from a dream that I had last night. I also have some scriptures that the Lord uh, wants me to read with you guys uh, that he's put with this message today. Um, I pray that you guys have had a wonderful Sabbath or really that you are having a wonderful Sabbath since it's still really early. Um, I pray that you guys are having a wonderful weekend and a safe weekend. Um, also this message is going to be for those of you who feel as though you have not received, uh, any form of justice, uh, for the things that have been done wrongly to you guys, to you and to your families. Um, the Lord wants me to let you guys know that there is no type of evil or wickedness that he is not aware of. And that certainly justice is going to be served. Okay. So for somebody out there, you've had something, somebody out there has had something really bad happen. Um, and you feel as though the criminals or the people who have done this evil are getting away with it. The Lord is saying not so, not so. And especially if you are a child of God, not so. Okay. That's what the enemy wants for you to believe. He wants for us to believe that God is not going to fight for us, but God in fact is really fighting for us. Okay. Um, this is not an easy walk. This is not an easy walk for a child of God. You know, and I don't know why people seem to believe that because we serve God, that it means that it's going to be easy when in fact it's the opposite of that. It actually becomes hard. It actually becomes hard because when we were blind and living in the world and living for ourselves, you know, even if things had been hard, they, we didn't recognize just how hard it was. Okay. It wasn't until you made that change and you come over to the Lord's side that suddenly you, you can understand just how bad things are, how much of a fight it is, um, to live this life. And um, to stay before God, okay? So we're going to get into this dream. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to share what the Lord will allow me to share. There are some parts of the dream he will not allow me to share. Um, and so now that you guys are aware of pretty much who this message is for, you need to understand that God is fighting for you. Um, there will be justice that will come. Um, and even if it appears that people are getting away with what they thought they had gotten away with, they aren't, you know, the Lord is saying, you have a lot of people that are delusional that once they get caught in the act of doing wickedness, he says, a lot of them, it's a lot of corruption in our world, you know, and they feel as though once they have gotten away with it and they feel like they have prayed for mercy and everything and God comes through and shows them mercy that as soon as they have recovered from the punishment that has uh, that God has uh, given to them, they feel as though I can go right back to scheming and doing the same amount of evil. But this time I'm just finding other ways and other methods to go about doing this evil that I'm doing. And the Lord is saying not so. And this hour, people are going to begin to lose their lives. They will begin to lose their lives. They will begin to go through punishment, severe punishment, the Lord is saying. And if they don't lose their lives, it's going to be so severe that they will, they will know that there are certain people they are not to bother. They are not to touch. Okay. So let's go on and hop into this dream. And then we're going to talk about everything the Lord would have me to relay to you guys. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I need for you guys to understand that while there is corruption in every part of the world and in every form of organization in this world, you have to understand that among all of that, you have good people. You have people that are on the Lord's side. So where you say, well, there's corruption in the, uh, the system and the government and the prisons, there, there's corruption uh, everywhere. There's corruption in the churches. There's corruption all over the place. What you have to understand is while true, it is a lot of it. There's a lot of bad in places where it should not be. You have to understand that there's also good there. There's also people there that are 
there to do what is proper, what is decent. And um, they are there to, they're, they're actually rendering a service to the community, but the proper service. Okay. It's not, um, it's not filled with, uh, corruption and evil. These people are just there to do the job. They have the right heart. They have the right motives. And the Lord is saying there are plenty of people out there like that. I pray to God that some of you guys are just like these people. I myself am one of those people. Okay. Um, I don't believe in evil being done to people. I don't believe in uh, paying people evil for their good. You have a lot of people, even in families, they will pay your you, the good that you do for them, they'll pay you back with evil. And unfortunately, that's just the world we're, we're living in. It's just that way, okay? So let me go ahead now and get into this dream. So in this dream, uh, there was a family. And the woman was, there was a little baby in the family. Uh, she looked to be a taller infant. Uh, and there was a gentleman that was watching everything that this woman had done. And now you guys know for us chosen people, we always have eyes on us. We always have lurkers. We always have stalkers, game stalkers. We always have people who are preying on our downfall, people who are just watching. I mean, it's insane. I've never in my life, I understood things the way that I understand them now. Never in my life, the level of, of watching that these people will do to people who are chosen by God. So in this particular dream, this person was staking out this woman's place. Um, and when the woman had left, the, I'm not going to say gentleman, because he was not a gentleman. He was a total, complete demonic monster. So he had come to the woman's place and had entered in some type of way. I don't know if the, the children had allowed him in or what, but some kind of way he had gotten to the little baby and he had art her. Now, I am not going to say the words. I'm going to attempt my best to not say these words any further on YouTube. I, I, when, you're, when, you're, when you're speaking, sometimes, you know, it's a lot harder, but I'm going to try my best not to say those words, okay? And find other words or letters to describe it. And you guys, I, I believe you're wise enough and smart enough to know what it is uh, that's being said, okay? So the gentleman had R the baby. And when the parent had arrived, they had saw that the baby had been art, but the thing that was so crazy about it, the baby had survived it. Now we know that if you've seen any cases in life, uh, if you watch any type of show that had a case about a baby, uh, being art, typically that, that, that baby or child doesn't survive, you know, uh, even up to five, six years old, those, those babies and children don't survive. This is an infant baby. That baby is not, we typically will not survive. Okay. Uh, because there's a lot of damage going into that baby's body is not, uh, that baby's body is not developed, uh, like a grown person's body to be able to handle that type of trauma, uh, being put on it. Okay. So, um, I'm not going to say the baby was M'd because obviously in the dream, it looked like the person had come for that one opportunity to R the baby. And that's what they did. So I saw the woman go across the street. Well, first she made a phone call to the police. The police took forever. They did not come when they needed to come. And so she walked across the street. And when she got across the street, there was a group of police that was standing there at the house directly across the street from her place. So, um, it looked as though this woman had been paying attention to that individual, but, um, that situation still occurred regardless. Okay. Um, but the Lord was saying to me when I woke up the weight, the reason why as to why the baby survived it was because that woman had a praying lifestyle. That woman was a servant of God. That woman, uh, she just was that type of a woman. And that's why the baby was able to survive that and pull through. It was, it was basically a miracle. So the, but the baby was in and out of consciousness. So the baby kept slipping in and out. 
So the woman got across the street where the group of police officers there was a whole lot of them standing there. And when she started speaking, you know, before she started speaking as she was walking, uh, she was saying to herself, OK, I got to say the right words to these police officers so they will leave where they are to come to where I am since this is an emergency situation. And so um, she gets to them. She's talking to them. They're like, well, ma'am, we're taking care of a whole nother case that's very serious. And so we have to you have to wait. So the woman started talking about, well, this is a baby involved. The baby has been art. Please come. She's in a, a serious condition where she's in and out of consciousness. Uh, and I need you to get to her right away, the lady said. So then they jumped up and they said, what? You know, like a baby has been art. Are you kidding me? And two of them, which were women, jumped off of the balcony and the rest of the police that were men, they all jumped off of the balcony. Said, show us where you live. And so the woman was directly, I mean, literally she was so close to the house that was across the street that was having, um, whatever was going on. It was some form of a case. It, it looked bad, but they got up from there and said, this one is more important. And they left the scene of that case and had come across the street to the woman's house. And so they had go in, they had called for help for the infant they had made sure everybody else in the house was okay, and they started to search for the man. Well, when they found the man that had done this to this infant, they had beat the man to a pulp. They beat him down, and the man ended up losing his life. They beat him down. When I say, when I say I've never seen something so bad, it was, it was like a mob of police jumped on this this animal. And beat him down till he his life was gone. He he left here. That's the only way I can put it. He he was out of here. He was out of here. And the Lord was telling me that was what he calls street justice. That was immediate justice on that family, for that family, immediate justice. So a lot of you guys are going to get immediate justice when there's wrong being done to you or to your loved ones. Uh, you're going to have immediate justice. Okay. Just as soon as you call on the Lord, he's going to show up for immediate justice. And a lot of you guys have that type of connection with God, including myself, where you can call on God at any given time. And it's, he's going to be immediate with you fast with you. Because of the type of bond and relationship you have with him. Mm. I feel you, Holy Spirit. Because of that, he's going to move speedily on your cases. Okay. Um, and so in this dream, also, there was a woman who was dating or a gentleman that wanted to date a woman. And the woman did not want to date him. Um, but he was interested in that particular woman. But he was and on another scene, he was somewhere beating up this woman's child. So uh, in the dream, the woman entered in and saw the man beating up her child and she beat him down. I mean, the woman had the type of strength of 10 strong men and it was a woman. She had the strength of 10 men and she beat the man down to a pulp. And then the police came and got the man and dragged him off. Okay. And then when he got to the prison where he was, he got beat up by the people inside of the prison. So let me tell you guys, we know that when people harm children and when people do evil against any type of child, baby, teenager, whatever, uh, we know that in prison, when people get whiff of that, they end up they end up taking them people out of here. They end up beating them up or taking them out of here. Uh, I've never heard of anyone surviving uh, that has capital M or are uh, a baby. I've never heard of them surviving in prison. Okay, because those people, even though you have some real criminals in in that place, there are people who still feel as though harming a child is the worst thing you could ever do. Okay, and they will 
render their justice inside of that facility. Okay, so those were two different uh, cases there. Um, there was another part that I can't really get into, but what the Lord is wanting me to tell you guys, as I stated before, that there are people who they are, they're, they're, they're pretending as though they have not had, uh, anything happen to them for touching a lot of you guys and touching your families through voodoo, witchcraft, uh, through whatever they're doing, uh, to try to harm you children of God. There are people who feel as if they have got no way. Okay, some of you have even physically experienced certain things at the hands of evil men and women. But the Lord is saying that he is the one that's going to bring justice to you. He's going to vindicate you guys. He's going to bring justice to you. Um, and these people are not going to get away with the pain that they have caused you. You know, you have a lot of people who had come into your, uh, into your life. They were aiming to bring pain to you. They were aiming to harm you. They were aiming to, uh, what the, the whole purpose of these things that the enemy does when he attacks families and when he goes in and he does all this chaotic mess is to cause people to lose hope. It's to cause people to lose faith in God. It's to cause people to say, you know, well, God is not real. If God is going to allow all of these different things to go on in my family, all this harm and hurt and devastation and chaos to happen to my family, God must not be real. He must not be a real God. And this is a trick of the enemy. God truly is God. And he's not going to allow his children to, to for these things to happen and for no justice to be served on your behalf. He's not going to allow that. So let's get into these scriptures um, that the Lord wants me to read with you guys this morning. Deuteronomy 20 and 1. When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God who brought you up from the land of Egypt is with you. So understand God is with you. Don't be afraid of your enemies. Do not be afraid of any form, any, any, any enemy. Don't be afraid of them. Okay. Because it's not you that they're fighting. They're fighting the God that's in you. They're fighting the light that's in you. Okay. When they're fighting against your purpose, your destiny, when they're trying to destroy your family, so that you don't get going to where it is that God wants you to go. When they feel that they can fight you this way and feel that they can go on about their lives, the Lord is saying no, no. And he's saying that a lot of these people are actually going to lose their very lives for messing with a lot of us. They're going to lose their lives or they thought it was a game and they thought that they could cry, you know, cry wolf. And they did it way too many times. And the Lord is like, no, this time you're going to actually have to pay for what you have done to these children, to his children. You're going to actually pay for it. And a lot of these people are going to pay with their very lives. Okay, so let's go here. Um, Proverbs 21 and 31. The horse is prepared for the day of battle, but victory belongs to the Lord. <clears throat> Psalms 55 and 18. He will redeem my soul in peace from the battle, which is against me for they are many who strive with me. So guys, there's a lot of people who are striving against us. A lot of people who are a lot. Okay. These are not small numbers. Okay. But the Lord is going to defeat every group of people, every group that rises up against you guys, the Lord is going to defeat them because there are things the Lord has for you to do. A lot of these people, they're never going to stop playing the game. They're never, they're going to play the game until they're out of here. They're never going to stop playing the game. And God is not a God that plays games. He doesn't play games. When he says that he's going to do something, he's going to do something. When he tells us as his children to do something, he expects for us to be obedient. I'm going to be with whatever God tells me. I'm never the one, the type that will hear God tell me something and ignore him. I'm not that person. 
I'm not that person. I'm not going to withhold anything from anybody when the Lord tells me to do something. I'm just not. So um, Isaiah 42 and 13, the Lord will go forth like a warrior. He will arouse his zeal like a man of war. He will utter a shot, a shout. Yes, he will raise a war cry. He will prevail against his enemies. Now you see there, he says his enemies, he will prevail against him, against your enemies. Jemiah 1 and 19, they will fight against you, but they will not overcome you for I am with you to deliver you declares the Lord. Mm. Let's see. Revelation 12 and 7. And there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon, the dragon and his angels wage war. So there's a war going on. There's a fight, guys, that is happening. Okay, we have to understand that against light and darkness, there's a fight that's happening. Uh, though you guys are tired of the war, I myself am tired. I myself get exhausted at times and just tired and I have to go and, you know, sit down somewhere and get strength from the Lord. Okay. I have to sit down somewhere and get the strength that I need directly from him from these battles. Okay. And the, make no mistake about it. God will strengthen you. He will strengthen you. Every time you experience a battle, he will strengthen you, uh, replenish you, pour himself into you. He will give you the things that you need in order to be successful with every battle that you're fighting. Okay, so this is the last one. Acts 14 and 22 from the Amplified Version. Strengthening and establishing the hearts of the disciples, encouraging them to remain firm in the faith, saying, it is through many tribulations and hardships that we must enter the kingdom of God. So there you have it. To enter into God's kingdom it comes with a lot of hardships and tribulations. You're not going to just go into uh, the kingdom of God, sitting back, relax. None of us, none of us, none of us. So if you're, if you're just fighting for yourself and your family to enter into heaven and you're working and you're doing the work of the Lord, there's going to be some hardships and tribulations for you as well. But if you have a calling on your life and you're chosen to do great things and you have a family, it's going to be excessive. It's going to be excessive warfare. Okay. But you have to trust God. You have to trust God. You have to have faith in God. If he called you to something, he's going to fight everything and anything that rises up against you to destroy you. He's going to defeat any enemy that comes up against you. Okay. If he's chosen you for something, he's going to take care of you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to make sure that what he has spoken will come to pass. He's going to make sure that he lines you up with people who have the same heart that you have, the same dedication and determination that you have to defeat the devil and to defeat the enemy of your souls, of our souls. Okay. You have the same determination to see souls revived, to see souls saved, to see souls delivered. He's going to put you with those people. He's going to make sure you're with people who don't have hidden agendas. He's going to make sure that any type of trap or plot will be shown to you in advance so that you will have the opportunity to cancel anything that comes up against you in your family. Okay. So the Lord wants you to know right now, he wants you guys to know that the fight that he's about to do, it's going to wipe out your enemies. They're going to leave this earth behind touching you guys. Okay. And we're not rejoicing in that. But people have to understand that this life is not a game. This thing is not a game. People are running around here thinking they're up above God. They're high and mighty. They have all this power, but all they have is devil power. They have witch's power. They have warlock power. That's all they have. And that is not going to last. Because at the end of it, it is God who is going to win. It is God who is going to make an, a, a fool of these people. He's going to make a fool of them. It's, it's these people who are going to pay with their lives and they're going to end up in hell. 
So I don't know who this message is for, but I've spoken about, you know, the, the, the groups of people who is for is basically, like I said, for everybody who is feeling as though maybe the Lord isn't coming through fast enough. You have to understand that a lot of you have more power than what you think you have. And the reason you have that is because of your relationship with God. I feel you, Holy Spirit. It's because of your relationship with God. People are underestimated. A lot of you guys, they took you for a joke and didn't realize that a lot of things they experience, you know, uh, whether they were punished through uh, some form of violence, something bad happened to them. Okay, some form of violence happened and they may have, like I said, survived it in, at that moment, but then they continue with the same mindset. They continue with the same uh, spirit. They, was, they, were, they, they just were not appreciative that the Lord had saved them from dying. The Lord had saved them. And so they continued to do the same things that they were doing and the Lord is saying their lives are about to be cut off. They're about to be done. If you've gone, if you've gone through something, your children have been attacked or violated. Um, even if you are an adult now and you were a child that has been violated, I'm talking about an actual violation where somebody has entered your body. They have done something where they've come onto your body and has, uh, constantly done this thing over and over again. There's justice that's coming. There's justice that's going to be served. You know, it would behoove people who are living these demonic lifestyles and being wicked for them to sincerely repent and mean it. Because the Lord will save a person who is sincere about wickedness and about evil ways. He will do that. That's what he does. He will save a person. But now if the person is still doing these things and they're still moving in wickedness and, um, and evilness against children of God, there's no coming back from that stuff. Especially when you're plotting and you're planning and you say to yourself, well, that didn't work, but we got to go back and regroup and go back and try something different. When you're doing these things, you're, you're working against God. You're not for God. And I don't care what nobody says about, you know, people, uh, being sent, being used by Satan. Some people get enjoyment from this. Okay, I'm, you know, come on now, you know, clearly the Bible says not everybody's going into heaven, so we can't make it say something different. There are some people who are just evil and wicked at their core, and they're not going to change. They don't want to change. And then you have some people, they feel they're trapped. They feel that they're trapped and can't get out of that wickedness. And so they continue to do the same wickedness. They continue to do the same wickedness. And the Lord is saying, you're going to have justice. Whoever this is for, you're going to have justice. It will be served. Some of you will know when it happens and you will know, oh, that happened because of what they did to you. And then some of you won't even know that it's happening. But these people's lives are going to totally fall apart. Okay. When they touch your family, when they touch your children, they're going to lose their lives. And there's going to be justice being served. And some of you, it's going to be immediate. These are like those police almost represented like your angels. How fast, how fast they came, how fast you went running and how fast they came to handle the situation. Okay, so. Listen, guys, I'm gone on that note. I pray that you guys have uh, the, a rest of uh, an enjoyable day and weekend. I pray that this message reaches the ears of those who need to hear it. Please kindly like, comment, share, and subscribe. Share my messages out. Don't just sit there and listen to it. I'm getting real tired of people coming over to my channel listening to stuff like, what do you, I mean, really? <laughs> It's a, it's a trip to me, you know, and I already know what it is. I already know what it is, but it's just weird and funny to me because there's no way that I'm, I'm just, I keep saying this, but I mean it. I'm just not going to sit back and watch people. Like, what is that? That's um, a little bit weird. I'm not going to sit back and just watch people. You know, um, if I'm watching somebody, they're going to know that I'm watching them. If I'm watching somebody, I'm going to share their stuff. If I'm watching somebody, I'm going to comment. I'm going to like, uh, if I agree with them, I'm going to comment. I'm going to like, 
Um, but I'm certainly not going to just sit by and watch somebody for so many years and think that eventually I'm going to stop them because you know, the lie, that's a lie. That's a lie from the devil and the truth ain't in him. Whatever God starts, he's going to finish. And that's what it, that's what this boils down to. Whatever he starts, he's going to finish it. Okay. And as he's finishing it and people are getting in his way, whenever they decide they're going to try God, then they will be trying the wrong person. Whenever they decide to try you, they're trying the wrong person. Okay. And they will be met with whatever justice is going to come. Whatever judgment is going to come from them trying wrong people and trying people that God's hand is on, they're going to be dealt with. So I'm gone on that message, guys. Please, like I said, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next message. Take care. God bless. Bye.